You're listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast with registered patent attorney, Dr. Adam Diamond, founder of Diamond Patent Law, the number one source for securing your intellectual property needs. Now, here's your host, Adam Diamond. Hello and welcome to the Patenting for Inventors podcast, episode 115, What is Patent Litigation Scheduling? My name is Adam Diamond, a registered patent attorney and founder and owner of Diamond Patent Law in Los Angeles, California. I can be contacted through my website at diamondpatentlaw.com, that's D-I-A-M-E-N-T, patentlaw.com, or call me at 424-281-0162. It's been a little while since I've gone through the chronology of patent litigation. I started it, and then I did some other topics. So let me just briefly cover what I've covered so far. And that's that patent litigation is when you are bringing a case to court because you think someone has infringed your patent or someone is bringing you to court because they think that someone uh, that they have that you have infringed their patent. Uh, I did an overview of it in episode 103. Then I went into the first stages, which usually is a, a, a cease and desist letter and then responding to the cease and desist letter. And those were episodes 104 and 105. Then I went into what is in a patent infringement complaint, and this is the first document that you are filing with the court uh, saying that you are starting the litigation process. Then I talked about answering a patent infringement complaint in 109, and the last thing I talked about for litigation was shifting the case back to the patent office. And that's when you want to go back to the patent office to make a decision about the validity of a patent before the trial court makes any determination. Because if the patent office says that the patent is invalid, then there's essentially no more court case. In this episode, I'm going to go over the first real part that the judge is going to do with the case, and it's called scheduling. This happens after the defendant files an answer to the complaint. We don't want the case to go on for 10 years or longer, so we have some deadlines for certain things uh, that have to happen, and that's what scheduling it is. Uh, It's the judge, and uh, he's going to be setting these different deadlines for certain things to happen uh, in the various parts of to make uh, uh, various parts of the case to make sure it's progressing forward. There's no one size fits all for scheduling. Different courts will have different rules about what has to happen and when. The judge is going to send a scheduling order for the case and the due dates for each of these uh, things that that have to be done during the case. I'm just going to go over some things that are typically on the list. Uh, If you're going to have witnesses, and you will have witnesses, you need to exchange your list of witnesses with opposing counsel by a certain date. You're not supposed to have any surprises at trial. So whomever you plan on uh, bringing as a witness, you have to list who they are. Uh, Then you have a bunch of what are called discovery cutoffs. I'll have a whole episode about discovery later. Discovery is where you are trying to find out information. You'll have dates when you're supposed to submit claim construction. I talked about claim construction before. That's when you have to define the words in a patent claim. Let's say your invention has a tunnel in it, for example, but the infringing product has some kind of groove, but it's open on one side. Is that a tunnel? Um, Well, that's one of the things you're probably going to have to fight about. And you have to uh, kind of fight over that in claim in a claim construction document. Uh, And it's all about what words mean. And the judge is going to want to hear from each party about uh, what claim construction they want. And there's going to be a deadline for that. And the judge is going to want to see your response to the other side's claim construction. So there's a deadline um, also for what's called a meet and confer. That's when the judge says that you and the other party have to get together and kind of hash out certain certain things. Um, It could be in phone or in person, but there's uh, a deadline for a meet and confer. There's going to be a hearing date, and that's going to be scheduled um, for a claim construction. I've talked about that in a previous episode. That's called a Markman hearing. That's where you kind of a little case about uh, in front of the judge about what the words mean. Uh, Then there's going to be deadlines for motions. Motions are when you're asking the judge to make a ruling on something before the case even starts. Let's say you don't think one of the other witnesses should be allowed to testify because they're saying he's an expert at something and and you want to say, no, he's not an expert in anything, so he shouldn't even be allowed to uh, to testify. There's a motion for that. There'll be deadlines for when you have to file these motions. Uh, There might be a motion where you want the judge to throw out the case or make a determination about the case very early on because you don't think there's any evidence at all to support infringement and the plaintiff never submitted sufficient evidence to begin with, and that's called a summary judgment motion. Uh, There could be lots of different kinds of motions, and there will be deadlines for those in the scheduling order. Uh, There will be dates for when all the depositions have to be completed by, um, or when, and also when discovery must end. Uh, There might be a date where you have to go to mediation before the judge will hear the case. The scheduling deadline will also, or sorry, the scheduling order will have a trial date on it. 
and also before the trial, you're going to have to have a deadline on when all your material has to be submitted to the judge before the trial date. Now, lots of times you can request for dates to change. That happens a lot because for whatever reason, uh, things couldn't be done on time. Sometimes the judge will allow a change. Sometimes she won't. Uh, sometimes the judge will want a status conference where everyone meets and discusses if everything is moving forward. And uh, those are pretty much the basics for scheduling. It's just to keep everything on track and move forward. If you miss a deadline, sometimes the, might, the judge might be lenient and let it slide, uh, but maybe not. So, uh, for example, if you don't designate a witness by a certain time, you might be barred from calling that witness at trial. So you really want to be on top of your scheduling order to know what is due uh, so you don't mess that up. If you miss a deadline, uh, you can be sure that the, that the other side is going to pounce all over it and ask the judge to sanction you or bar you from doing certain things that can all have a detrimental effect on your case. If you want help with your patent application, trademarks, copyrights, responding to rejections, appeals, or anything else related to your invention, you can contact me directly through my website at diamondpatentlaw.com. That's at D-I-A-M-E-N-T patentlaw.com. Or email me at adam at diamondpatentlaw.com. Or call me at 424-281-0162. It's also the same number that works for texting. If you like this episode, just send me a text. Uh, like hearing from people who listen to my podcast. Just say, uh, listen to your podcast. And um, don't need to say any more if you don't want. If you want to say more, that's great. And um, I'm Adam Diamond. Until next time, keep on inventing. Thanks for listening to the Patenting for Inventors podcast with host Adam Diamond. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review on iTunes. The contents of this podcast are intended for general informational purposes only. The facts of every legal matter are unique and the content of this podcast should not be construed as offering legal advice for your specific legal situation. For more information and help with your own intellectual property needs, contact Adam Diamond at patentingforinventors.com. That's patentingforinventors.com or call Diamond Patent Law at 424-281-0162. The preceding information may be considered an attorney advertisement and does not establish any attorney-client relationship.